Welcome, oh, welcome to another war game review by theplayersaid.com. I'm Grant. And I'm Alex. We are having <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> we're having a really difficult time. We uh, we just had a very funny moment, and it's not leaving us. <laughs> and I've got to go. It's almost ten thirty. It's time to go oh. home. But uh, today we played Washington's War, and actually our copy is a second edition copy from 2014. As you know, this game was designed by Mark Herman is a card-driven game, or a CDG, uh, and was released in 2010, so it's been reprinted. And I can tell you, I know why it's been reprinted. It's yes. it's a very good game, very solid, very solid mechanics, and also, frankly, very enjoyable. I think for a... It took us about three and a half hours, three hours or so, to get the rules down, and we actually only played through 1779, so we played just over half of the game, and the game ended. Yeah. Uh, because of a card, and we'll talk a little bit about that later. So we would have still had four rounds left, but we were starting to pick up momentum. I believe the rounds were, were now taking somewhere between 20 and 30 minutes, depending on whether yeah. we had a battle yeah. or not. One of the things that did slow us down, and I will make this comment now, and we can talk about that later, great player aid, lots of good information here. In fact, you know, the whole combat, all the DRMs and the different modifiers, and, and then your different actions, what you can and cannot do. What's missing, Alexander? Um, the sequence of play. The sequence of play. I'm actually shocked. We kind of said to ourselves, this is a GMT game. They don't make mistakes like this. It is not printed on the board. We looked. It is not anywhere on the board. It's not on the player aid, unless maybe we didn't get one of the player aids. I don't. Maybe, maybe. I, don't know. I, I doubt that though, because you know yeah. they pack the game properly. Or even sometimes they've got a condensed sequence of play printed on the, on the back of the rules no, or anything like that. This is the playbook. Yeah, yeah. Then it's good, yeah. Couldn't I, find one outside of the one that's like pretty in depth in the rule book. Right. So we have to keep opening that. It would just be nice to say, oh, this is boom, 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 boom. Here's right. Going. So th that was one of those things right off the top I, I was actually a little disappointed in. So uh, maybe for the third printing, that could be changed. And, and maybe we could print out that... Uh, was there even a sequence in play in the... Yeah, there was. It was, it was spread was, over two pages. It was pages. spread across two pages. Yeah. And had, had, had some good detail in it. And, but it's nice having that handy... Just makes gameplay like much Make simpler. sure I'm doing it right instead of having to look back and flip right. in the rules a bit more than I would have wanted to. Right. So once again, card-driven game... Uh, the American Revolution, uh, Revolutionary War, obviously named Washington's War. It covers the struggle between the British, uh, the mother uh, British, and their uh, rowdy children, the Red colonists. Redheaded stepchildren. Redheaded stepchildren. Um, obviously, you know Alexander's from <laughs> Southampton, so he has a very, uh, very specific take on this. They also don't teach anything about the American no, Revolutionary they were not, War. Not when I was at school. I guess they when you're even... the. When you're the loser, you don't dwell yeah, I mean, on it, right? So, didn't talk but today, it. who was the victor? I was the British. I the British. Alexander kicked the kicked my can. Which is one of the first times that's really happened because we played Wilderness War, and it was is, a draw, and that was a draw after then, about eight hours. And then we played. I don't know if I've ever won Liberty or Death as the British. I just for I, some reason I've got that really hard. I've got that game down, and I do well on that. We played uh, War in the South a couple of months ago, and. That was close. That I was, won by that a was much of closer than any of the, the main so, games. So, first played. time that I have lost a fictitious play of the <laughs> Revolutionary War. I cannot tell you, in the very last round, even though I had this game in hand, my, my heart was racing. So I was like, oh, yeah. no, 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 no. Yeah, you, you had this thing really by <laughs> and I was the like, fourth round. I was round. so like, exhilarated that winning yeah. this. I don't know. And Congratulations. I was, I was, which is so dumb. I want to tip <laughs> my hat and table flip right now. <laughs> Just kidding. So anyway, great game. Uh, really enjoyed it. We had a great time. And I think that's most important. Anytime we play these war games, we want the realism. We want the simulation. We want the historical flavor and the theme. We also want great mechanics and, yeah. and, and good gameplay. But to me, fun is why we do this. I didn't come over here on a Friday night to slog through a game that's boring for yeah. five hours. And this one is fun to me because it's 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 immediately and infinitely playable. Right. Like mechanically, it's really not that complex. We've played a lot of CDGs in fair. So we have a base. So yeah, to, to draw. I know on. how to manage a hand. I know what I'm right. looking for and, and how to play my cards. And you know, this has the back and forth tug of war control style mm -hmm. of areas 
which we've seen that in a lot of different Love games. Love Twilight Struggle. Yeah. Same, and, and even, same concepts, kind of. Even, even in the coin games, where you have the control yeah. and the levels of, of, of how much you you have that, this has a lot of those similar feeling elements, so we were able to dive in very quickly. Yeah. And, you know, the, the deck itself is... Is not a complex deck. This deck reminded no. me of Wilderness War in that a- way. Absolutely. You've got one, two, three ops cards, and that's the majority of the deck. And a couple of events. There's, there's some events, two dozen there's events. some battle events, and then there's some like overall game end or some, some bigger events. But yeah. really, it's the majority of it is ops cards. Right. So you're not. This is to me could be learned by people who are getting newer into war games. Mm-hmm. This isn't this is overly complex by any stretch of the imagination. I, I think of all the CDGs that we've played, I thought this one was the, I, I'm going to say, I think the most simple mechanics-wise, most, accessible. Yeah, I would most say accessible, especially for someone who doesn't, I, I mean, we really read the rules fairly quickly. I read them this afternoon for about an hour, and then we reviewed them for maybe 30 or 40 minutes. But I think anyone can kind of jump into this game and, and understand how to play it fairly quickly, yeah. which, which I think is cool. We, I mean, Labyrinth, not that way, right? Labyrinth, you're going to have to play it. Yeah. We've played that game. That's strategically a very complex game. It is. But we've played that game five, six, seven times, I think. And I think now we've finally started to figure it out and yeah. get comfortable. Wilderness War, we're, we're still not sure every aspect. But we liked that game. We liked this better. I liked this a lot better than, yeah. than Wilderness War. And that's Sorry, part, partly Volko. thematic as well. Right. But, I, once again, this is a good entry point or jumping off point for anyone that's interested in a, a card-driven game. I think this is a this is a winner, and I, and I really like it. What were a couple things that you specifically liked, Alexander, maybe about the mechanics? Man, I liked the asymmetry of the sides. They're not... Um, they're not wildly different, mm-hmm. but the nuances that Mark Herman built into the different factions make them make them different enough, right? The 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 British have fewer generals, and they're much more difficult to activate usually, and you know they have a very set reinforcement schedule, mm-hmm. um, so they're a bit more lumbering. In theory, and they, but they have the they have the naval movement, which gives them a lot of freedom, at least on the coast. Yeah. Whereas the Americans have more generals at their disposal, and in theory can make lots of small stacks and kind of pit around the board as like an army of ants. Which is so actually a, a viable strategy, I think. I think, I, yeah, I think that's the way you got to do it to with do. the Patriots. And there's you know different bits and pieces. With Washington has his own little rule mm-hmm. set. And and then, winter offensive is a great one. Right. I really enjoyed that. That that is not something that the British had. So if you don't know, the winter offensive is if your very last card in your seven card hand is played on an offensive to move Washington and his forces into a battle, you get a, an automatic plus two DRM uh, to that roll. Yeah. And I I, I like that. In fact, I I saved that up a couple of times to try and make a, a splash at the very end of the round. I like that. But yeah, definitely asymmetry between yeah. the two. I really loved the tug of war for the political control of the colonies. And we'll show you the map in a moment, but there are markers that denote which side has the most influence in a city. And then in, in that colony, uh, the most whoever has the most political markers gains control of that on this colony schematic, it's called here on the board. Um, and if you can see, and we'll show you this in a moment, the victory conditions required me in order to win. I had to have seven of the 13, actually 14, right? Aren't there 14? Because Canada counts. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 11. Yeah, 14. 13 colonies plus Canada. I had to have seven under my control. Alexander, in order to win, had to have six. Anything less than that uh, f- for him or me was, was considered a draw. So if I had had six and you had had five, it, it would have been it would have been, been a draw. Um, really liked that element. That is a that is a sit, serious tug of war. Many times I would play a card, remove one of his political control markers, and Alexander would right flop down a it. card and put it right back. And that felt exactly like Twilight Struggle. Yeah. We just like go and, back and forth. And, and, and that's things. sometimes what you have to do. You, you kind of have to keep forcing that until somebody blinks. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and then once they blink, 
you either play a more powerful card and get more of those down, or skip over it so they you know move more so they can't get so that they back. can't get back in. Yeah. That was another thing I really liked the area control and almost walling off of the uh, point to point movement. Some of these areas, uh, for instance, New York, for me was only accessible through one city. Uh, I'm sorry, Long Island was only accessible through New York. So if Alexander was ever able to cut me off there, I never would be able to get in there because I couldn't use ports. Um, actually, I could reinforce to that area with the with, with the, the fringe, but we never got that point yeah. because the so so that was really cool trying to kind of wall someone off and prevent them. And then at the end of the game, I was simply trying to take away uh, one or two of his colonies so that he would not win and try to force a draw. Really enjoyed that. Loved that tug of war. What was something you maybe didn't like? Not a lot. I don't know if there was anything I didn't like. Uh, the, the only improvement is something like, give me a handy um, sequence of sequence play, of play, play or player aid. I've been spoiled by coin games with the artwork on the cards. Yeah, a lot of the artwork yeah. on the arts cards is replicated. But, but I mean, that's t- that's. T- I mean, I don't know if there's anything I disliked about mechanically right. about the game, really. Well, there were only two things I think that I disliked. One, the French, um, while they have some, I think, some power, and it depends yeah, on yeah. how the game is going, I spent a lot of time trying to get the French into the battle, and frankly, I got it all the way up to eight, and I needed one more point to bring them into the war. And, and looking back, if I could have got them in earlier, maybe in the round three or four, I think it would have made a, a difference. But by round five or six, I think at that point having the French wasn't necessarily going to be a huge advantage to me other than providing me another general and a stack to move around and take away your political control markers by ending on a turn or flipping them over by using uh, political control. And the the naval blockade is nice, right? You can use that to pin... We were never able to experience that, so I still don't know that I can make a real judgment on that. So... A little concerned about that. I feel like the French in, in a game like Liberty or Death, getting the French in there is absolutely vital because they add so many resources to your ability to fight. Those British regulars or those French regulars come in and they help you by adding another benefit because they're regulars and they give you more bodies. So that was one thing I thought I spent a lot of time trying to get them in and I don't know that it really was worth it. I think the other thing that I didn't like and it was probably more a condition of being our first play and not necessarily shuffling the deck very well. These end of end of war cards, they are mandatory events and there are five of them in the game. Yes. We literally drew in one round four of these and they require you to play the card and the war then ends on the date that those cards say it ends on. So rather than ending in 1783, which is historically when it ended, when uh, Yorktown was sieged and Cornwallis surrendered, you now end in 1779, which is what our game was going to end in. And I felt like that was very devastating. It it really cut my legs out from underneath me yes. because I was trying desperately to build my momentum, and then it was like it was too late. When it came out, we had literally two turns, and the game was over, and I knew there was one card left in the deck that could change that end of the war but I didn't know where it was. Ended up, I think it was about halfway. Yeah. It right. was about card 20. We weren't getting to it any time. For two or three more turns. Um, didn't really like that. I, I think those cards, while I understand their purpose, uh, maybe there's too many of them. And maybe, I, I don't know, maybe they shouldn't come out. Uh, who, who knows? I don't know how to, to, to fix that in my mind. But once again, through a couple more plays, I may feel differently about that. Yeah. Partly is because I lost and that just stings. <laughs> Um, I can't lose this game to Alexander because he's a he's a Brit. I, I can't do that. It's not right. But maybe that's something where you would house rule seeding each one of those into parts of the deck. That the, actually, maybe. Liberty or Death does that with the Winter Quarters. Right. Maybe that's a, a way to. It just I just felt like it ended the game prematurely. It I did. felt like we were. Well, that's getting, why I did it. But yeah, uh, having, and I know having why four did it. in one hand was. You know, it was too we much. We both had two each, and it was just like, and yeah. the effect of those cards and what they can do to the game, I thought was lost. Right. So, so really, those were my only uh, concerns. I think the mechanics are great. I love the simplicity. 
uh, most overly used word in, in board game review, elegance. I, I really think the mechanics work very well together and, and are very smooth um, and makes a very playable, very, very playable experience. Yes. So I, I don't know, do you have anything else you want to say or any other comments about the game? So I think this game has a reputation, and I think that reputation is very good. I feel like this game lived up to that reputation. I believe, mm-hmm. you know, this is one of those CDGs that, like, go out and play it. You'll have a blast playing it. The rule book isn't arduous to read through. Right. You know, I also feel like there's actually a... Strategically, there might not be a lot of freedom, but, like, you can move your guys decently and yeah. get around yeah. and do a lot of things. You not you don't get too bogged down. You don't have to get bogged down. Yes. Yeah. Well, and I also really like the fact that I was punished because I moved away from the, the, yeah. the middle colonies, and I would have never done that. Looking back on it, that was a big mistake. Washington took Canada. Yeah, Good he took it. Canada. Um, I, I just wanted to try something a little different and get you out of there. But, uh, you know, definitely a good game. Uh, very playable. Uh, we have played now, I think, six or seven different uh, CDGs. Like CDGs. Yeah. Um, I think in my top, let's say, three or four, Twilight Struggle is my favorite. I think, and I think that's probably the way you feel. Yeah, I would, I would agree with you. On that. I would say number two for me is Labyrinth. I would also agree with okay. you. Okay, isn't that funny? We we <laughs> just excellent. It's just they're it's amazing. So good. I think now number three for me is Washington's War. This is a, I don't. I'd have to make a list of all the ones. I've well, played. yeah, I mean, I have to think about that. I just think of if I want to play something, and I think this one I really want to play. Now I like Wilderness War. Yeah. I also like... Uh, I think this one's more playable than more than this one to me. Days of Ire is one that you didn't play, but no, I was able to play with the other group. Heard, that sounds that cool. was really fun. And, and I'm not including coin games in this because coin games are more card-assisted. They don't have the ops values, so it's it's a very different... They're card-assisted, I, I think, is I what would, the... I would... Empire of the Sun's drawing. <laughs> Empire of the Sun is... Yeah, you're right. I kind of forgot about that one. That's got to be in my top. One day we'll make an actual list of all yeah. the ones that we love. Because we do so love many. But this, this is Empire of the Sun really a lot. easy to play. And I had a blast playing it. Yeah. I could see playing this one more often oh, than yes. some of those others. Absolutely. Only because I know probably three hours is what this going, game's going to take. And, and yeah, and it would if we played this length game that we played now and played that tomorrow, it would be much quicker. Yeah, two, two hours would be my guess. So... Anyway, that, that's, uh, that's our first thoughts on Washington's War. Look for a review uh, in the next couple of weeks. I'd like to play this one more time. I Actually, I don't know that it's made for solo play, but I think you could play it. There's not a... You could, but I think that this... Some CDs yeah, lend themselves right. to be able this to do one would not be. This one I don't think so. I think the hidden information on your hand would, is would too ruin powerful. It. You're right. But, you know, I think after a couple more plays, I'd like to write a review and, and get this one up. I, 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 I like this game a lot. It's very good. I'll play anything by Mark Herman. Yeah, we, we enjoy Mark Herman <laughs> games. In fact, I know there's a new Mark Herman game coming out soon. I won't. I think I know what it is, but uh, it's supposed to come out on the P500 maybe next month uh, in June. So um, we actually may be playtesting that. We were asked if we might want to. So we'll see how it goes. Thank you for watching, and uh, this is the Player's Aid. Please visit our blog. Uh, We have a lot of good content from unboxings to reviews, AARs. Um, We look at Euros, too, and and other things. So I I think it's a good read. Please give it a check, uh, and we'll see you on the flip side. Thank you.